everybody and welcome back to another video thanks for tuning in again my name is chris and we're going back to the uh, crimson fist here to kind of finish up uh, i think the last video i was trying to make it as one and i think got split in a couple so It'll be a few different parts in this whole thing um kind of shifted everything over try to do this as quick as possible i know originally i said i was gonna possibly wash them all down uh decided against sex it's back to just trying to get these guys paying as fast as possible so um, we're going to skip on the red hands and the other guys. We're going to kind of just focus on him and then kind of do the rest of them too real quick. Like I said, I kind of do things in different orders. Um, I usually do start off with silver before I do the red, just in case I make a mistake or something like that. It's just easier to touch up. Um, we're just going to do everything with the uh, the lead belch. Uh, just just kind of you know make sure that it's thinned down a little bit so you can get all the... Uh, Good to seep in the cracks very well. I also kind of want to do this before I start doing his face. So if I make a mistake, um, it's done on that versus, you know, the after fact. Um, the thing is, it's always easier to paint one way than the other. And, you know, I think the silver and the skin tone kind of go together hand in hand. So, but one of the little things that are different is this is a heavy. So he's a little different with the backpack. So normally, all right, guys, I'd leave this part blue in this one. We're just going to go ahead and just kind of just, just silver it all out real quick. Um, so just make sure your paint's a little thinned out. Doesn't need to be super thin. Um, don't want it super thick either. Uh, too thick and it just doesn't, it kind of globs up. And, you know, if you get a little bit where it's like that, that's fine. You know, no big deal. You just kind of go over it real quick with everything. Like I said, you always want to make sure you have a, a medium sized brush is what I'm using to kind of get the most amount of the area done as fast as possible versus you know the smaller brushes and again you know, depending on how detailed you want it depends on you know what I do um, on the other hand I'll probably will throw a little wash on this just to kind of make sure the recesses are a little more uh, defined um, I'll do a couple of them go back and uh Touch it up with a brighter silver just to kind of get it that, that nice glow look to it. Um, or worn look or sharpened look or whatever you want to call it. You know, you know, different guys use different terms for the same thing, but it is what it is. One of the things I do do is um, right here, I try not to get those creases. I try to leave those, if I can, black. Uh, it just kind of adds to that deeper dimension to you know how deep the hoses are and stuff like that um just different things like that uh, and maybe maybe a little luck maybe these heavies will get some better rules to them become more playable than they currently are um maybe make up so they always do two wounds or i don't know or extend the range or something um you know the strength is nice you know, but still, it just does the one wound. It's not like, you know, strength is a big factor. You're like, oh, yeah, I need that really strong thing because uh, I need that extra strength to do damage to a, a big creature. Well, that's great, but one wound to a big creature, a lot of times it doesn't make a huge difference. A lot of big wounds, a lot of wounds to a, creature, a big creature can make a difference in the wrong run, but um, some of them, I mean, you know, if you're shooting at like a demon primark or something like that, uh, one wound strength nine guns just don't really seem to make a huge difference where you're better off just hoping he rolls bad for a last cannon or something like that and getting the die six in there instead um one of the other reasons i was trying to get all this on here this weekend is kind of want to talk about the vegas open um some of the new stuff they're talking about here obviously they're gonna have some brand new primaris models um but i think everybody's talking about chaos uh, which is really cool because I am a Chaos player and we'll, we'll get these guys on there and go over some of the Dark Legions. I got a lot of Dark Legion stuff that I use or haven't used in years. I should say I haven't used in years. Um, uh, most of it's not even painted because uh, their rules have just, just been okay. You know, it's one of those things I feel like it's just that's part of the reason why I moved on to Death Guard just to uh, change it up because they're really just space marines with uh your basic vanilla space marines with you know similar rules but i don't know i mean being able to reload re-roll re your leadership if you have to roll it um it's pretty good i think with regular space marines it's a little better than some of the 
bonuses you get with uh, the chaos stuff nowadays. Um, unless you play, you know, like Death Guard or Thousand Suns and you get all their additional bonuses, you know. That's pretty big. So I'm hoping that with the new box set with the Primaris and the Black Legion, you know, they'll come up with something for the Black Legion, something different um, than just what they currently are. Um, I'm not saying they're terrible. It's just the current meta, they're kind of hard to use, I think, or to be competitive in any kind of way. And obviously, you can, you know, you can play them however you want to play them. Um, you know, people play them just for because they like them. Um, you know, and I've done that with a few armies. I think I have a couple armies uh, that aren't that competitive, but they're fun to play. And, and you get lucky with them. Um, sometimes it's lucky rolling. Sometimes it's just just a typical... Trying to make sure I keep them in the camera here. And things like that. But I do want to talk a little bit about that box set. Everybody's talking about, obviously, the... The new obliterators, which are awesome, compared to the old obliterators, which I think are, I don't know. I just, you could just say they just seem like they're just a little, little outdated, but they're not even that old. I mean, I got some of the first gen obliterators, if you want to see what real outdated looks like. But I guess they've tried to go with the Centurions and make them big and puffy and stuff like that but that stretch skin I don't know it's kind of the same feeling I had with the hell brutes when they first came out it was like oh so it's a chaos dreadnought with stretch skin across all of them now and now he says hell brute instead of dreadnought and but he's still a dreadnought so so those are those this should be a pretty cool thing I mean I might even force me to get two box sets if that's the only way to get them originally that's what I did with the uh the release of the chaos a long time ago to get some of the, the extra chosen you know the way you could get them is to keep buying those box sets, those core box sets. And it was the same thing with the Dark Angels and the uh, the bikers. I mean, you know, way to get, like, better-looking bikers were from that box set. And they were great-looking. I mean, I was expecting them to actually just make them like that. And then instead, they just let them go and went right back to the old ones. And I'm actually kind of surprised. It was, like, going backwards. I thought it would be nice to see them go forwards on that stuff. But... Could have been cost or the molds or whatever it may be. But, but I've watched a lot of YouTube videos today on the new box set. And, uh, you know, everybody keeps talking about what they see and stuff like that. You know, you see a, uh, a possessed marine on there. You see the sorcerer, which is really cool. Um, the other thing you see on there is obviously the new Chaos Spider vehicle, which, you know, who knows what the rules are. To figure it's right around the size of a dreadnought, maybe a hair smaller. I think it's on the oval basis that you see, like with the new bikers, um, like the custodian bikers and stuff like that. But the thing I want to talk about, and I want to jump into it and pop it up there because everybody's seen the picture, but is the new Mar the new Primaris Marines on there? Um, the, uh, and then, of course, you see on their website, they got the sniper ones, and they got the the new librarian that's in camouflage, which is pretty cool. Um, I actually really like that. Um, that kind of that might have made this be the scheme I might go on. I might put time in and actually do the camouflage on it, because that was, in my opinion, really cool for them to do. It's just something different. It's something you would think a Marine would be. It would be a little more camouflaged. Um, Unless, you know, here I am, I'm bright blue or bright red or bright green or whatever it may be. You know, these guys are dark blue, which still, it's blue. So it's not like it's going to be camouflaged in any kind of way. I'm going to miss something on the other guy. I just realized that little top spot right there. Um, but the one thing I want to talk about, and nobody seems to be talking about online, is right in the middle... There is a Primaris Marine shooting, which at first I thought it was like a Storm Bolter, but it's not a Storm Bolter. And I thought, well, maybe it's, a, you know, a Storm Bolter on top of a vehicle or, or another gun on a vehicle. And I look more, nope, his hand's underneath it. And the more and more I start looking, I'm like, that's not a bolt gun. Um, and it's not one of the new sniper rifles they've been, they're showing or show, showcasing. It's something different. And 
I am like been staring at it, you know, every chance I got today to, to look at it. And I'm like, what is it? I mean, is it going to be a new special weapon? Are we finally going to start seeing, you know, tactical squads? Um, get them? I mean, it could be a bolt gun. It could just be the artist. A little too much silver there. Uh, it could just be the artist trying to like make it so it looks like the bolt gun's more po facing towards you. And it's got a massive muzzle flash. I mean, that could be the case. Um, I don't know if it is. I mean, I know you see that every once in a while in their art, but Games Workshop, you know, more recently, uh, compared to the first game, pretty much whatever they draw is what you get. Um, you don't see a lot of stuff where it's like, wow, what is that sword this guy's got? No, nobody's got that sword. Or, wow, look at that claw somebody's got in that picture. No, nobody's got that. Um, you know, it's usually like, yep, it's uh, it's something... That's, that they actually use. I just remember like the old original rule set from years ago and it had crimson fists on the cover and the guy had an orc head and then the space marine had an orc head and he was like something in between a terminator size space marine and a regular space marine just really unique looking and he had like this thing that was like a cross between like his arm being a gun or a um Plasma gun, you know, it's just so unique. And I know when they came out with the additional models of stuff where they've kind of doing like the, uh, I'm trying to think of what the, the anniversary model a couple of years ago. Um, I thought for sure they were going to dump that on him. And I thought that would be really cool. But because they didn't, I didn't buy it. Because I wanted that, whatever it was. It was a Volkite or something like that. And the first time they did it, you know, that would have been cool. But no, it was just a, just a, artist depiction of some weapon in the 40k universe that's not being used but now i'm starting to wonder well what are they going to do with this i mean are the you know are those guys you're seeing are they, they going to be a new type of uh ravener or are they going to be some new scouts um i'm hoping it's some new scouts which i thought it's really kind of funny that you have like a librarian with scout stuff so maybe a librarian that can actually pop up closer uh, which would be really cool you know, first turn smite without a vehicle and keeping them covered with a bunch of bunch of little guys around them. Keep them safe. Uh, I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, do something different. Uh, I always like it when they add a new rule to something that's that's different like that because you know it does give you a, a new perspective or you know something new to do. Um, I do kind of almost wish they would have waited a week to release some of the stuff because. I was pretty excited with Gene Steeler Cults getting released. And now all I'm thinking about is Black Legion and what are these new Primaris Marines and what's these new sniper rifles? Where are they going to be? Are they going to be, you know, higher strength? Are they just going to be like stalker bolters or, you know, what what are they going to be? Um, some few people think that, you know, the, the Space Marine Captain slash Lee Tenant slash nobody knows what he is might be a Primaris version of Talion, uh, Talion, which is the uh, scout sergeant for the Ultramarines. Who's, you know, I don't really think he needs a new model. I don't think he needs new rules. Um, and he's actually pretty good the way he is. I, I wish he had some of the old rules from Seventh. I think he was really usable in Seventh. He was dangerous in Seventh with a with a with a squad by him, um, especially a squad of you know, pretty much a squad of anything by him. It just, God, he was just so devastating. Um, you know, no cover saves and giving rendering to a unit right off the bat and just nasty. Um, and I kind of nerfed a lot of that. I think rendering's kind of fallen to the, to the wayside. I do think uh, salt cans are expensive now for what they are. You know, I kind of wish that they would uh, change that up. We're going to kind of, like I said, speed through some of these real quick start on those so I can get back to um, then showing the highlights and what I do with those. So I just use a little null oil shade just like everybody else does on the metal. Let's start on this guy just kind of make sure it's a little watered down but just kind of make sure you get it right in those cracks. Uh, kind of get that darker look to it and especially down in here in the vents. My camera's a little off. So I was trying something new. I don't know if it's working out for me as much as I want it to be. Um, can't pop down on this guy. Um, 
So yeah, I'm pretty excited about the new puck set. I was really excited about Gene Stiller Clocks. I actually had not planned on even playing them um, at all. Uh, it should be another army for me to put together, another army to speed paint through and try to get on a table and show you guys. But, you know, after watching all the reviews with the Codex um, and reading over it, I was like, man, these guys are actually going to be, they're going to be usable. And, and, you know, maybe against uh, the Crimson Fist. I mean, it's a horde army. It's not going to be as usable. But against some of the other ones, I mean, that psychic power to be able to, Take control somebody is pretty nasty. I mean, again, it's a high high roll. You need a seven. Um, you do things right. You only need a six because uh, you get the bonus to your psychic roll. But it, it's not going to be a game changer, but it could definitely affect, you know, how close you want to get to them. Because if they take control of, like, a knight, and I think that's what everybody's talking about, it takes control of a knight. You know, they have a high leadership, so... Not the easiest thing to take control of, but if they did, um, like a Valiant or something like that, I mean, that could be, you could possibly kill one of their knights with their knight, um, and then they're stuck dealing with that factor that that just happened. Um, the one attack in hand to hand, I don't think, is as big as. Um, oh, that's another silver spot. Oh, I'm missing the little, I'm missing the little guns kind of rushing too much, but oh, we'll get it later. Like I said, just trying to get through these and just like I said, show you guys some tips. If you guys have questions, let us know if comments, concerns, stuff like that. We're probably gonna sooner or later here, hopefully shortly, sooner than later, get a couple of reports out there. Um, but yeah, anyway, well, back to those gene stealer cults. Part of the reason I wanted to also think about playing them is I own a lot of gene stealers. Um, they're always one of my favorite models in my Tyranid army. Um, They're just really powerful for what they were for the points. You know, lots of attacks, lots of uh, lots of dudes. They have a five up end vault save, which isn't g terribly good, and it's terrible if you have to worry about an all shooting army because they just wreck them from a distance. Um, played a game re recently and used the new Bolter uh, Bolter rules with the beta, and they just it almost wiped out an entire squad going after. A heavy squad of centurions because you get that plus one for being outnumbered and then you're hitting on fives and sixes instead of sixes and you're just firing so many shots into them and it just it almost took them all out and I, I would have it would have almost changed the game i hate to say it but it didn't get them all uh, out of 12 we got 10 <laughs> um which is still pretty good and but then they had to deal with the brood lord and he just kind of took care of them and and then it just that just kind of went downhill in that little corner afterwards because they just just been a big pain. Um, the swarm lord kind of cleaned up everything too when it got in there, and this was all the things that literally where I had to take a, a big lord and hold the swarm lord back for one turn, and then run away just so I could shoot at him and kill him. And which I always hate running away from hand to hand because it seems like it's one of those things that. Seems like it's becoming more of a standard smart move to do, run away and shoot. And uh, nope, sadly these guys can't run away and shoot, but if you have another squad right there standing by to rapid fire, you can just really pump the pump them in and or you know, it's, or even hell blasters with an overcharge. You get two ones per hit and then, then that three up end ball saving hand to hand, which was just a nightmare to deal with and from the get go was just too much for you know most of the stuff I had because Crimson Fists are more of a hand to hand than their brother uh, Imperial Fist, but not much more. Um, it's kind of the way it is that they just that bonus for hitting is, is pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you really can't make tactical Marines that great in hand to hand, they're just okay and. Against an all hand to hand combat army, they're they're just gonna, you know, their armor kind of helps a little bit, but I think I agree with a lot of people that there's a lot of points in a three up save, and everything's minus one nowadays. So it becomes a four up, and you say, oh yeah, well you know, you know, Eldar won't even get a save, or Tau don't get a save, or they get barely a save. You know, a six up save with a minus one, so that's 
you know, that's why the space grades are so good. It's like, yeah, but it's still, you pay a lot of points. I mean, you, you get a lot of uh, guardians for the price of a few space marines. Um, or Tau Fire Warriors and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, you throw them away, but it's nice that the, it's a little too soupy. Like I said, just kind of doing a, a quick part on the silver. I'm going to do another video here when they dry in a second and start it back up. So kind of a couple couple parts series. But like I said, the goal is to try not to get too much in the creases. I'm doing terrible on this one, but it's all right. Most guys will just paint it all the way silver anyways and go back over and highlight and kind of show you how to do that with the different stuff. Um... Of course, you could always just leave the hoses black. I mean, you could have painted them black and just kind of do the same thing like I was showing with the gray in the first video. You know, that way they just, uh, quicker way, just kind of adding more time. Something I don't have is kids keep bugging me to do something here in a minute with them, so we're getting off to do that. Um, but, yeah, I mean... I really like them. I like how quickly they are to paint. Um, yeah, probably gonna paint that red just to make it look a little different. So, so let's try that brush off, and then we're gonna go and do a quick dry brush on the others. Should be pretty dry. Let's see. Yeah, it's dry enough. Um, like I said, this is how quick I try to get things done. So I'm done in a couple hours versus you know days on end with everybody else um, just do a couple of these let them dry then you know, I'll go through and actually try to just get all of them silvered and red hand up but um, on the highlight for the silver I just use a uh, rune face deal so nothing special you know a lot of people use this and then they'll use uh, Necron compound to get it even brighter um, I don't go that far um, when I'm doing some of these things, uh, I used to. Um, again, it's just more time, and you're not really gaining a huge benefactor from it or benefit from it. You're just kind of getting that same same look. Um, but all I kind of do is just I just kind of touch it up a little bit in the center, get that that brightened up a little bit. You know, kind of touch everything up a little bit, so it just kind of gets that that silver edge to it. So just little bits here and there. You know, and then uh, so we'll, I'm gonna try to do a bunch of these videos where it's just different armies. Um, just can kind of see what I do to speed paint through them all, which will probably affect some of how I want some of my armies to look because not everything gets speed painted. Uh, not everything looks good with a speed paint. You can get away with it on these guys, I think, because you know when you play them on the board from a distance, they'll look just like as good as everything else. We'll get a little more silver on that. And that's kind of about it. I mean, it's just so just trying to do that. Now, one of the things you can do, I think I did this on the Ultramarine one, is if you're really careful when you dry brush with the silver. You don't even really need to use uh, any kind of an eat to shade it. You just kind of use the black as a shade. And so I guess I'm waiting on them. Um, oh, there it goes. Um, but just so you can kind of get a look at this guy's still a little wet, so I don't want to mess with them too much. Um, but anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in. And you guys have a good luck on the painting. And hopefully you get through them fast enough. And then uh, we'll do some more videos and good luck gaming. And like I said, I'm going to get these guys touched up. So I'll kind of catch up to the rest of them. And then we'll do like the skin on their faces again. I think I already did a quick video on that. I'll kind of finish up the red on the on the highlights of the rest of them as well. So they all kind of get that same kind of look. Um, it's kind of like one of the reavers I've done. So like I said, from a distance, they seem fine. Up close, yeah, you start staring at them, you start noticing the difference. So anyways, you guys all have a good night. And thanks again for tuning in.